kind of interesting and exciting, and I'm going to be talking pretty fast. <coughs> We're going to be talking about women in the Bible, and the next slide actually will show all the names of the women, and there are between 239 and 270 or 80 of them. Some of them groups like David's Ten Concubines, etc. Uh, we're going to be talking about four of them today. The first one is Sephora. We know her as the wife of Moses and the daughter of Jethro, the priest of Midian. Moses meets her when he's fleeing Egypt because he killed uh, an Egyptian overseer who was, who actually killed a Hebrew slave. So he's running from Pharaoh. He meets Sephora at a well, not surprisingly. Everybody meets at the watering holes. She takes him, of course, to her father. The father is impressed with Moses. He gives Moses Zipporah for a wife. They have two sons. Eventually, Moses has a meeting with a burning bush. He hightails it back to Egypt. And in the meantime, Zipporah saves his life by circumcising their son. I think most of us kind of know that story. Uh, then she kind of disappears, but Jethro stays around. <laughs> govern all the Israelites, etc. And he kind of aligns himself with Moses to be on the safe side. The Zipporah, unfortunately, just kind of disappears. Where she exactly went, what happened after that, is kind of unknown. She's a central figure, but she comes and she goes. Uh, next up are five women the daughters of Zelophehad, they are memorable because they filed one of the earliest lawsuits on record. Their father died, leaving no sons, and in biblical times, daughters could not inherit anything. That's a problem because they're coming to the promised land, and everybody's going to get a chunk of land depending on how many males there are over the age of 20 in the family. And it's not going to work for them. So they take their course to Moses, their cause to Moses and they say, hey, you know, we've got a problem here. There's no sons. We can't get any land. We're going to be lost. So Moses goes to God and God says, give the land to the daughters already. So they do that and a new law is given that says, if there are no sons, daughters will inherit. And then if there's no daughters, then the land goes to the uncles and the sons-in-laws, etc. And onward down through the male line. So they really stand out because they were the ones that walked out. Um, this law is somehow incorporated into uh, our legal system today. I'm not exactly clear on that. But it, said, it did say that legal courts accept this as law even today. And apparently it was written up in the American Bar Association Journal in 1924. The next gal is Rahab. She is listed in the Bible as a harlot. However, the word also could be an innkeeper. She has a house on the wall of Jericho, which is actually two walls, about 15 feet apart, archaeologists have discovered. And so her house is on top of the wall. Joshua has sent two spies to Jericho to kind of get the lay of the land. Rahab somehow connects with them. She hides them. And when the king comes looking for them, she lies to the king and says, oh, they're not here. And in the meantime, <coughs> under cover of night, she helps them escape down the city wall, down the outside wall of the city, so that they can go back and be unharmed. Now they tell Joshua, and somehow they get word to her, hang a red rope outside that same window, and we're going to know that that's your house. So while Joshua's destroying the rest of the city, her house and her family was saved. Tradition says that she later became the wife of Joshua. Abigail. Abigail is notable as the earliest pacifist on record. She lived with her husband who was chronically drunk in Carmel up in the hills. The husband, in addition to to being an alcoholic was also very wealthy. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. 
story comes at the time of the sheep shearing. David is nearby with 600 men. He's hiding out from Saul. He sends his men to help shear the sheep, which they do. Then he needs food, and so he asks for food, and the husband says, no way, Jose. So Abigail uh, takes charge. She doesn't even consult her husband, and she gets food for all 600 men, uh, gets bread made, etc. And she herself delivers the food. She comes on a donkey. Not a camel, not a horse. She comes in humility and she comes asking David, please don't destroy the city because of my husband. Here's food for you. And uh, please don't, don't hurt us and don't harm us. So she saves the city. She returns home and her husband dies very shortly. And David marries Abigail. He loves her very much and he rescues her. Uh, even after she's taken hostage, he, he puts his life on the line to get her back. So these are only some of the stories. If you do want the pink sheets, they are on the tables outside, those round tables. And they have every woman in the Bible and where you can find her, all the biblical references. So if anybody's interested in that, look yourself.